everyone! So I actually filmed this video earlier in the day, which much with much better lighting, but the sound didn't import, so I'm refilming it again just for you guys. Apologies if you can hear in the background my like pot boiling. I'm making dinner right now. I've got like 20 minutes before my dinner's ready, so I thought I would quickly film this video because once again I have another like 14 hour day. And I spent all day today working on a presentation for tomorrow as well as like writing a paper that's due. So yes, a little frazzled, but Vlogmas is carrying on. I'm not gonna miss a day. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on and continue on with my schedule. But uh, yeah, this is one of the challenges of doing Vlogmas. When you work 20 hours a week and you go to school full time and you have papers due and it's like crunch time. This is one of the downsides of Vlogmas is that it's you're always during such a busy time of year, but carrying on. So today I am bringing you an author spotlight on one of my favorite authors and one that I've loved for a really long period of time and that is John Wyndham. Um, I really like John Wyndham. I think he's a fantastic science fiction writer. He's kind of outside of my wheelhouse, but still within the classics field, like he and uh, Shirley Jackson, wrote around the same period of time, but they wrote on very different things. Like when you think John Wyndham, you think post-apocalyptic kind of aliens invading fiction, and he's a lot, but he's similar still to Shirley Jackson in that he's really subtle in his criticisms and like blink if you miss it. So if you like Shirley Jackson, I would definitely recommend John Wyndham. So to start with the first book that I read, The Chrysalids, which deals with a society set in Newfoundland, which is actually part of Canada, to those who don't know, it's like the east coast and to the north, um, deals with like a post-apocalyptic world and a society that is focused on the purity of everything from plants to animals to humans and any aberration, um, so any deviation from the norm, be it six finger or six toes um, or, you know, abnormally large animals or anything like that is kind of deemed as not good and gets either killed or banished. And the reason for this is because of the nuclear fallout. So there's a lot of aberrations popping up all across the board. So they have, they're trying to get back to the purity of the pre-nuclear time. Um, absolutely love this. I read this when I was 10. Didn't fully get the full gist of it when I was 10. I've reread this quite a few times and it's just, it's probably my favorite for nostalgic reasons of Wyndham's works, um, but really, really love this one. Um, I think this is an excellent place to start. The one thing that bothers me about this edition, as you guys can see, it is smaller than all the other ones in this set but I can't find it in the proper size. So it just, it bothers me and I learned to live with it. Um, Chalky, which was the second one that I read, deals with aliens and it tells a story of an 11 year old boy and Matthew has an invisible friend and his parents are kind of concerned about that because Obviously, like he's 11, he should have been growing out of this, but it turns out it's actually an alien um, and he can act, the alien can actually control some of Matthew's like movements and his thought process and they just have this constantly going dialogue and it just kind of deals with questions of how we would, like how we as humanity would approach the situation. Um, this is actually the last work that he published and it's, it's much quieter than the other ones. Like it's not as big or as dramatic, but it's really interesting. I would definitely recommend this one. It's probably my least favorite out of all the ones I've read because I really like his big, like splashy fiction, but th that one's probably the closest to Shirley Jackson. Next up is probably his most popular and that is The Day of the Triffids, which tells the story of basically a world gone blind and there's carnivorous plants walking the earth eating people. So this, this is probably one of the weirdest ones, like nuclear fallout, aliens, yeah, but carnivorous plants. This questions a lot of like science and kind of how far we should take science and whether or not we should be a little concerned with the direction that science is going in. And also looks at society really critically. Um, this is probably one of the better examples of this subgenre of speculative fiction called cozy catastrophe in which like everybody dies except for the main characters and they live like a fairly normal life but they're freed from the constraints of society and this is I think the book that kind of 
coined that term um, and it's really interesting. I do really enjoy this. There is a 2009 BBC adaptation but I haven't watched it because I'm a little afraid of zombies and that kind of thing and I feel like the plants are a little too close to zombies so I haven't watched that yet but if you are okay with that go check that out. Next up is The Kraken Wakes which deals with a direct alien invasion of Earth by deep sea aliens and it's just oh it's so interesting it deals with some of the issues that we're dealing with today so like rising sea levels and how the earth would kind of look as the sea levels rise and how humanity would deal with that and also how humanity would deal with a th like direct threat and with a you know superior society technologically wise so it's very interesting it draws a lot of influence from hg wells the war of the worlds which i haven't read yet but it's on my list Next up is another favorite of mine, and that is The Trouble with Lichen. This deals with scientists who are dealing with a type of lichen that can extend life, and it deals with the questions of immortality, and kind of, if this was discovered, who would get control of it? And it is... I just love this book so much. Oh my god, the main character, she's... Uh, Diana is just absolutely fantastic. She, and I don't want to give anything away because that's not the point of author spotlights. It's to get you to want to read, but it is very feminist leaning. Um, she basically starts a feminist revolution and it's fantastic. And it kind of made me love John Wyndham even more because I think John Wyndham is a bit different than most British authors. He kind of, he writes, he's, he is very British and he is very like middle-class British post-colonial view of the world. But he does try and like see outside of himself, which is really fantastic. And this is one of the better examples of that. Uh, next up is the one that I read most recently, and that is The Midwich Cuckoos, which deals with the small town of Wh Midwich. And basically a silver object appears and the entire town falls asleep. And those that wake up, because not everybody survives, obviously, um, people are lying out exposed asleep overnight and it is cold out um, and fires happen. And all the women are pregnant when they wake up. And the children that are born of them basically are not, clearly not their parents' children. Like they all look the same, they have the same eyes, um, they have telepathic abilities, they have um, the ability to control other people, and they grow at an accelerated rate. This is really, uh, this was such a fantastic work. And it deals with kind of how we would deal with the other in our myths and kind of how we as humans would confront a society that was so much superior to ours but that looked like us but that was very clear and it's looking down on us like in the crack and wakes which kind of deals with a similar theme uh you never actually get to see the point of view of the aliens whereas in this one you get the point of view and that is fantastic so then i have one more novel by him and two short story collections uh Plan for Chaos is probably the one that I'm going to read next, and that is the next novel. And then I also have The Seeds of Time and Consider Her Ways. Um, they have recently published two of his works that he published pre-war under another pseudonym. I think it was John Benyon, um, Stowaway to Mars, and there's another one, and I forget the name of it. And I'm going to be getting those, but technically they're not John Wyndham's works. I mean, it's the same person because he had like six names. His name, his full name... Let me find that for you because it's hilarious. It's John Wyndham Parks Lucas Banyan Harris. He has six names and he kind of at various points in his career used different pseudonyms but his post-war stuff is all published under John Wyndham. Um, so I'm a little, I have, I have some feelings about Penguin publishing them under the title like under the name John Wyndham when he didn't actually publish them under the name John Wyndham. I get why they're doing it but yeah I, I have some questions about that but that is my introduction to John Wyndham. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys tomorrow for another Vlogmas day. Bye.